the mystic power of choice. Everybody talks about free will. It would be almost like you'd say, <clears throat> all the fish in an aquarium have free will. Well, they, they do, in a sense, at some level. And yet they also don't, at some level. So when you want to make the best choices for yourself, you have to know what is best for you. And what happens is oftentimes it's the momentary sense gratification of our five physical senses and that, say the mind is the sixth sense that we want to have some pleasure of what we see, what we hear, what we taste, what we touch, what we feel in any, any way. And not realizing that there's going to be a result, uh, an effect of our cause, of our prior cause, of our actions. And to make the very best choices for ourselves, this is what's important, very important at, in this moment of, of what we call time, which is beyond time, which is you. In fact, it's wonderful being a no-body because you're not a body, you're a no-thing. And, and, no, and they say something is better than no-thing, but that's not true. You're the no-thing because you're not a thing. A thing is a creation and has a beginning, continues, and an end, you see. And yet nothing has an end because it, in a sense, is transformed, you see. In, in um, just like in the soil, like you can see these trees, that as they disintegrate, they go back and they create in the soil. So everything is continuing in that cycle. So to make the very best choices in every single moment, there is a choice. And there is a moment before an action, there's a choice. And what's challenging for us right now is that we are choosing uh, our people, we're choosing our location, we're choosing our, our um, what would you say, our reality. And we are real, so we are the reality. You are the reality. And when there's the choice being made between being who you are, truly, divinely, eternally, or being that false persona, that, that false ego, that, that uh, manufactured uh, false reality of a personality in order to belong, to be normal, to fit, to fulfill everybody's expectations of who you are and what you should be and what they deserve and what they don't deserve and all of that stuff and all of the past. So many people, they just live so in the past that they hold all these resentments and these angers and all of this stuff within them and they continue to suffer while blaming someone else for some situation that isn't even here anymore because all that's here right now is now right now where you are and you've never gone anywhere because you're always there. And once you really get that, that you determine the quality in the, uh, of your state of being. And what happens when people are believing their thoughts, they're believing concepts, they're, they have beliefs, they have um, uh, so-called lifestyles they accept, or uh, what they're being told, or advertising, or PR, or textbooks, or whatever, you see, you want to look at that which is promoted so openly throughout the world as what is valuable isn't valuable. And when you're making a choice you, for yourself, you have to know what's really valuable for you because it isn't going to be anyone else out there that is going to be looking after you. And I don't mean in the sense of, 
oh, I'm going to do my business and I'm going to lie, cheat, and steal because it's going to be good for me and i got to look after me. I'm number you know, one or number two. Forget about numbers. You're not a number. That's a game. We're number one, we're number two, we're number three, we're number four, blah, 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 blah. A team, B team, no. That's, that's all this kind of, what would you say, um, segregation. So if you make good choices for yourself, then the choice needs to look within yourself that moment before you take action or you make a decision. Where is that coming from? Is it coming from fear, lack, limitation, anger, resentment, all of that? You see, most people don't do their deep work. They say, yeah, it's right. That's right, Terry. That, you know, that's right. You're really right. But they're not doing their deep work to go and look at what are those beliefs that are running your life. And are you coming from a state of scarcity, scarcity and fear and not enough, and that justifies how you treat people? And when you realize at every moment how you treat others is how you're also treating yourself. And what you're doing is you're either honoring your own divine nature or you're honoring the faults, the concoction of the mind. And you're, you have a mind, but you're not a mind. And when we, we look at that as a person, as who you really are, your choices in every moment, the free will, is are you trusting your inner guidance and your inner knowing and, and, and who you really are as a divine being who endeavors for the welfare of all living entities and animals and such. This is be because you're in touch with your true divine nature and you take that stand to be who you are in every moment or what we're doing is trying to figure it out and analyze it and get the right act together to take it our show on the road to make it viable, you see. And when we do all of that, we're going against our nature. And the problems are never solved because the mind doesn't solve problems. It creates problems for it to solve, you see. So if you want the true solution to all of your problems and the choices, you have to take that to time, or you, what we call time in this reality, to give to yourself. In nature, in the quiet, turn off the electronics at night, at least, uh, you know, use those, those a cell phone only for an emergency. I mean, really start taking your life back because we get to the point where I can't live. I saw someone said, I can't live without my phone, my cell phone. I can't live without it. Really? If I don't have it, I won't survive. This is, people have diminished themselves to be inferior to machines. So make your choice in every moment. Know who you are. This this is what's about now. This is it. All right, my dear. And I know it's a challenge, and I know there's stuff going on, and I know it's confusing out there. That's why you must come to the center within you. And that requires that, that discipline, you might say, that is self-honoring, that, that you give yourself that permission to do nothing, no thing, but to be and listen and go and deep. And when you find these, these core beliefs that have been implanted that you're living with, you see the, the why in it and you cast it aside and you claim and own who you are and what you're part of. And we link up now with all those beings who are, who are divine in every way beyond the words. It's in the absolute sense of who we are. We are already unified. Let's acknowledge that and be strong in who we are in every single moment. And in each moment, you will know what to do and how to do it because you're in tune and in touch with you. And when you do that, all is well and good.